Please go ahead and be seated. Wow, what a great time of praise and worship. Amen. And God, yeah, give God a hand for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, man. He deserves a whole lot more than a hand clap. Amen. He deserves all of us. So thank you for coming and being here with us today. Great time of worship for all you that joined us at home. Thank you uh, for sticking with us. And we're looking forward to uh, sharing the message uh, with you this morning. Today we're going to be looking at blessed through troubled times. Amen. We have, we have some troubled times. Amen. And troubled times are all around us and troubled times are ahead of us. And we just need to be able to know that we're blessed. Let me ask you a question. And all of you at home as well. How many of you here today feel blessed? Amen. There you go. Give the Lord a hand for that. Yeah. We all feel blessed. Amen. And we ought to feel blessed. Let me, let me mention to you though, the idea of blessed is different with, uh, depending on where you're looking. In a worldly sense, the idea of blessed is basically saying that you're, in a world sense, that you're successful. Things have gone the way you wanted them. You've planned, you've worked, and now you've succeeded a certain level of, of whatever. But you feel successful. It may be that you've acquired physical stuff. Man, you, 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 you got good stuff. Maybe you don't have the best, but you, you know, you got some good stuff. Being also blessed means that you have wealth, maybe health, happiness. That's what the world considers being blessed. But my question is, what happens when you don't have these things? Do we then feel blessed? Well, the spiritual, biblical sense of the word blessed means fully satisfied. Fully satisfied. Also means at peace. Now, when that, what this means is at all times and all circumstances means you may not be exactly happy with the way things are going, but you still know that through this you are blessed. We're going to be looking at that this morning. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. So go ahead and and turn there. We're going to be looking today at the idea of following God and trusting in Him in these troubled times that we're living in as 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 a people. We can see that we can still call ourselves blessed, but here's when we can truly call ourselves blessed. Let's go ahead and stand in honor of reading God's word with us this morning. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. And the Bible says this, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when he comes. But its leaves will be green, and it will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Father, we love you and we thank you for the many things that you've given us. Thank you for the opportunity to stand before these people, stand before those who are watching us on this live stream, to be able to share your message, Lord, that I believe you've laid on my heart. And as we go through this, I pray that it's a continuation of the great time that we just had with our praise and worship, that it will be an extension of that, a continuation. And Father, I pray that the words that I'm about to say will not be my words, but be yours. I pray, Father, this message I, that, that, is, that I'm about to give is not one that I plan, but Lord, the one that you have planned and anointed. And I pray that the response of the people would be as you desire for it to be. And Father, it's in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. So when we look at these ideas of blessed, the idea of being fully satisfied and at peace no matter what's going on in our lives, that's the idea that that Jeremiah through God has spoken here today. This is what being blessed really is and there's a way to do it. So what we look at is the first thing is the Bible tells us In the book of Proverbs 3, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Now, the Bible tells us here to trust in the Lord with your heart and don't lean not to your own understanding. And the reason it tells us not to lean to our own understanding is, folks, we can't figure stuff out. Amen? The things that are going on in our world, we we don't have an answer for. But God does. And so if we continue to try to lean on ourselves, then we're going to find out that that we're going to have a lot of troubles. So the Bible tells us here 
that the, the one who is blessed is the one who trusts and hopes. The idea of trusts and hopes, those are two very important things. Because when we trust in God, when we hope in God through Jesus Christ, what we end up getting able to do is we get to have that childlike faith that I've been talking about now for several months. Having a childlike faith. Now, the reason that we're to have a childlike faith, have you ever noticed that kids, young kids, they wake up to live? Amen? That's what they do. They wake up to live. They wake up and, and, and they're kind of, if you will, in a new world. Now, sometimes kids sometimes wake up cranky. Amen? They don't always, now they wake up to live, but they don't always wake up in good moods. As a matter of fact, I have that at my house. Amen? Sometimes when they're all home, they all wake up and sometimes they're, they're not, sometimes they're cranky. As a matter of fact, I told him in the first service, Jade, I'm sorry, but I told him in the first service that I know all the four ladies in my house, my wife and my three daughters, and I have a certain ritual for each one of them that they go through because I get up before them. I know that's kind of hard to believe, but I usually wake up before any of the girls. And I've got a ritual for each one of them that I go through to be able to make sure they're, they're in a good mood. I, there, there are certain things before I talk to them, before I do that, there are certain things that I have to go through. And I call it offering up the offerings to the goddesses before the morning. Amen. To get my day started off right, I make the offerings. And each one of them has a different offering that I have to give them. But what happens is I found out even when they were little, that, that they wake up ready to live. Kids don't seem to be worried. In other words, they, they just wake up. They wake up and they're hungry and they're not worried about, oh my, where's the first meal coming from? They may not know when it is, but they know it's coming. So they're not worried about the meal. They, they, they don't wake up and they're worried about, what, what about the bills? What about the bills? How are we going to get the bills paid? I promise you, my daughters, when they were younger, they didn't wake up worried about the bills. I knew that because I was always running through the house behind them, turning off lights. Still do. Amen. So I know they're not worried about the bills. They take long showers. They're not worried about the water bill. So they, 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 they aren't worried about the bills. Ch children wake up and, and, and they don't care about what happened yesterday. They're not drawn down by the events of yesterday. And I used to joke that my dad would always tell me when I was a young boy, say, Harold, you wake up in a new world every day. I thought he was complimenting me. As a matter of fact, scripturally, I think he still should be complimenting me. Because I woke up in a new world, man. I didn't know what happened yesterday. I couldn't remember. Didn't care. But that's what kids do. Kids don't worry about yesterday. As a matter of fact, the Bible even tells us to be that way. Don't worry about the past. Don't worry about what's ahead. Deal with today. This is that childlike faith that when we trust and we hope that we're not going to be worried about what will happen tomorrow. We don't worry about that. My kids, when they were little, didn't worry about those things because they knew they were going to be taken care of. That was that childlike faith. But not also that, but when they got hurt. They didn't, wait, they didn't get hurt and then stand there for 20 minutes trying to figure out, who do I run to now? When one of them got hurt, I promise you, they knew, run to mama. Amen? That was their first thought, their first reaction. Run to mom. As a matter of fact, guys, many of us, if we were man enough to admit it, there have been times when we were young men, Maybe even now that something hurts us, wouldn't we still like to run to mama? Oh, come on, men. Say amen. It's all right. We would love to run to mom because we know. We know that the minute we get to mom, everything's going to feel better. Mama's going to heal the boo-boos. Amen? Mama's going to kiss us. Sometimes that's all we need, a kiss on the forehead, tell us we're going to be all right. And then what would she do? She'd send us on our way and we were good. Folks, listen to me. When we trust and hope in the Lord, we'll not have to sit in times of pain and hurt and sorrow. We won't have to stop and figure out, where do I go? 
I know automatically because I trust and I hope in the Lord that I will be able to go to him immediately and he will take care of me. This is what he says. Blessed are those who trust and hope in the Lord. So we have the childlike faith. There's no worries. We can run to, 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 to be taken care of and then we can sleep peacefully. That's what childlike faith is. Have you ever watched your kids when they were young? Have you ever watched them sleep? Now, I know the kids don't like hearing this, but yeah, we, we as parents watched our kids sleep. And I remember there were times that some of the best times that I remember as the girls were little was that we would gather in one of the rooms and it was always a debate because they would always remember it differently because remember they didn't think about yesterday that, hey, it was in my room, no, it was in my room, no, it's my room tonight, blah, blah, blah. So, but anyway, we'd work all that out, finally get in the room and we'd begin to pray and we'd pray together. So I'd tuck them in and, and then I'd go back in to do my things. There were times that I remember that I would go back into the kitchen and maybe I was dealing with something that was really heavy and it weighed on me and it would have dealt with the family maybe maybe we a budget item maybe there was some struggles of things we had to purchase maybe there was just some other stuff happening and always before I would go to bed I also had a ritual that I would go back in and I would check on my girls now folks listen to me I had just come from the table where I probably was stressed more than I should have been, but I was stressed. I was tr anxious trying to figure things out. But I said, I'm going to go check on my girls. You know what was always amazing? Was I'd open the doors and I'd look in there and the girls, have, each one of them, they'd all just be sound asleep. They weren't worried about those things that I was worried about. They were children and they were laying in their beds. You know what, you know what they had there in their mind about any situation that was going to go on? Dad's got it taken care of. I don't have to worry about it. Dad will do it. And they slept well. Can I, can I tell you something? That in these times that we're living in right now, in any situation in your life, this trusting with the Lord and having hope in Him, this is exactly what you and I should be able to do on, on our nights. Do you know no matter what's going on around us, wherever we are, do you know we should be able to lay our heads down and go to sleep? Do you know why? Daddy's got it. Amen? If we trust in the Lord and we have hope, we're blessed. Because we'll have that childlike faith knowing that things are going to be okay. Things are going to be good. God's got it worked out. We don't have to worry about it. That's the childlike faith. But so often we, we trust in ourselves. And, and that's where the problem comes in. That's why that verse, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. That's why he tells us that. Because he knows if we begin to trust in ourselves, try to figure it all out. Man, we're going to get stressed out. We're going to get upset. We're going to get angry. We're going to be doubting. We're, we're, going to be, we're going to be eating ourselves up. We're going to mess up because we're trying to figure it all out. And we don't have the answers. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord with all their heart at all times and all circumstances. In prepping for this message, I came across an article. And the article was entitled, 178 Seconds to Live. Now, in this article, what they did was they talked about 20 pilots who were, had exceptional flying records. But the, the thing was, these pilots were all uh, visual flight pilots they never had learned the instruments and so now these pilots what they would do is they would make absolutely sure because they didn't know the vfr the visual flight rules they didn't fly in those they would make sure wherever they were going that there was clear weather if it was bad weather they wouldn't even they wouldn't even fly they would know that they had would be able to get there at a certain time because they didn't want to get there after the sun was going to start going down so they always had the visual always had it so what they did was they took these 20 pilots and they put them all in simulators. And what they would do during the simulation is they would take these pilots who were, again, exceptional pilots. And they would and they'd put them up in the, uh, in, into the air, again, through not in a real plane, but the simulator. And they would put them through situations. And then they would fly them and immediately they'd go from the ground and they would fly them through uh, heavy storms, clouds, and then darkness. And they found out on an average that even though they had the instruments in front of them, they had, and all the instruments were accurate, all they had to do was look at the instruments, 
what they found out was that these pilots would begin to follow their own instincts. And they would begin to think for themselves. And what they average was, what they found out was on an average, it took them 178 seconds to crash the plane. Some a little longer, some a little less, but the average was 100, 178 seconds and they would crash. And if there were people on board with them, they would have killed every person. Because the instinct of that individual took over. And they began to think and reason, not trusting the, the, the accuracy of all the, the instruments. And what I began to think about, this is kind of like us. That we have afforded to us a trust in a God who knows everything. A powerful, all-powerful God. All-knowing God. A God who has a plan for us. A direction for us. A purpose for us. But yet we begin to take it upon ourselves to reason it out ourselves. Find the answers out ourselves. And then before long, it's not going to be taken very long that we're going to crash our lives. We're going to crash our families. So what this scripture tells us is blessed are those fully at peace Fully satisfied are those who trust and hope in God completely, without doubt, without hesitation, because then we're going to have this childlike faith that's going to be able to help us. So we can't trust ourselves because when we do, we're not going to be fully satisfied in ourselves because we don't know all the answers. We don't have all the plans. And I can't have peace if I'm the one figuring it out. Amen. But he said, blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have hope in him completely at all times. And here's what he says. He says, he'll be like a tree planted by the water. Now, you remember a few weeks ago, I hope you remember a few weeks ago, I preached a sermon about the cisterns built by our own hands and how they leak and they crack. And I talked about how with the cistern that we try to live our lives pleasing ourselves, but yet we come over here, and right over here is this river of living water that's right there. He says, if you trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and you will not lean to your own understanding, you'll be like a tree that's planted by the water right there. Now, verse 6, if we'll go back just for a second, verse 6 talks about if we don't trust the Lord, he says, for you shall be like a shrub in the desert. Now, You notice the difference. He said, if you don't trust in the Lord, you're going to be like a shrub. A shrub is is dry and brittle, causes a lot of fires, and doesn't have much to go with. But he says, you can be a shrub in life or you can be a tree. There's a huge difference. He says, man, if 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 you trust in the Lord, you're like a tree that's planted by this water. And he says, once you're done that, he says, you don't have to fear. There's no fear there. He says that if you're like that tree, which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. Folks, can I tell you, there's some heat out there in our world today. Amen. I'm not talking about the 105 degree days we've been having over the last few days. I'm talking about real heat. Amen. There's a lot of stuff going on out in our world. But it says, you know what? You don't have to fear that. Isn't that good news? I don't have to fear. I don't have to fear what's going on out there. He says, you're like a tree that's by that that, that river. When the heat comes, you're going to be refreshed. That spirit is going to be working in you. That spirit is going to be replenishing you. That spirit is going to be giving you the nutrients that you need in your life. And you don't have to look around and go, oh my, what about tomorrow? He says, I've already got tomorrow. You don't have to fear anything. My friends, with the heat that's going on in our lives and the heat that I'm telling you, I preached it last week, I believe even more heat is coming to the church. I believe even more heat is coming to those who claim to be Christians. I believe the heat is there. I believe it's coming more. But he says, you don't have to fear it. But not only do you not have to fear, but you don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be anxious about it. He says, in the year of drought, not just when a hot item comes around or a hot day or a hot situation that, man, it it got pretty warm. He says, sometimes the drought comes. 
Sometimes the things that we go through are not just a one day thing. Sometimes it spreads out. How many of you would believe that 2020 is a year of drought? Amen. It's a year of drought. But he says, we don't have to be anxious. Wouldn't that be great if we knew that we didn't have to worry about the year 2020? We don't have to worry about what's coming now because God still got it and God's under control. Areas around us may be dry, but we don't have to be dry. The whole world around us could be in a drought, but we can be refreshed every single day by the Spirit of God working in us. Isaiah 58, 11 says, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy. That's back to being fully satisfied. That's back to being at peace. And he will satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose water does not fail. Can I tell you, friends, listen to me. I got some good news for you. You at home, I got some good news for you. Jesus is our living water. And my friends, Jesus will never fail us. Ever. He will never fail us. He will never let us down. He will never let us be taken over. Jesus said, you don't have to fear anything. You don't have to be anxious about anything. Trust in me and what I'm doing for you. Trust that there will be plenty of that water there. Trust in it. And he says, not only do you not have to fear, not only do you have to not be anxious, but he says, here's the good news. You will still yield fruit. Whoo! You're still going to yield fruit. Even when everything else is droughtful, it is brown and it is dying, you will still produce fruit. Now what happens a lot of times, many times when things get hot, when situations get tough, what most people do, we're prone to go into what I call survival mode. Now, in survival mode, what you do is, man, you, you, you suck into yourself. You pull into yourself. And you protect, you protect yourself. You are the one you're worried about. And if, as, as I've said in the first service, what we do is we that old phrase from the Western days is you circle the wagons. And all you do is you protect what's in there. And he says, you don't have to worry about that because you're going to produce fruit. And so what we do, though, is when things get tough, we begin to circle the wagons. And, man, we protect ourselves. We're not worried about anything else. We're not worried about anyone else. We're not worried about anything going on around us. All we're worried about is that we take care of ourselves, survival mode. And we'll do whatever we can do to be able to take care of ourselves. We won't reach out. We won't do anything because, again, we're in that survival mode. But the Bible says that if we trust in the Lord... That we will be blessed, and by that we will produce fruit. We're going to be more worried, we're concerned about people around us. And you know what a church is going to do in those hot times, in those dreadful times, if we're trusting in the Lord? You know what we're going to continue to do? We're going to continue to serve God. We're not going to suck in tight and close the doors and quit worrying about and not worry about letting people in. Oh, we can't let more people in. we got to take care of ourselves. A church that is full of the Spirit and producing fruit will continue to serve. You know what else we're going to do? We're going to continue to give. Because I'm not worried about it. God's going to take care of it. We're not going to pull in tight. We're not going to close our wallets. We're not going to close up our checkbooks. Even as the church, we're not going to stop. Oh, we're going to cut our budget now because things are going to get tight. No, we're going to say God's going to produce fruit. God's going to take care of us. We're going to continue to give as God calls us to give. So not only will we serve and will we give, but my friends, listen to me. We're going to reach out. We're not going to be afraid of the situation in our society today. We're going to be careful. But you know what we need to do, folks? We need to reach out. We need to be going out there. We need to be pointing out there. We need to be thinking out there. Quit thinking about us so much. He says that's how you're going to produce fruit. Because you're going to trust in Him. You're going to get watered by Him. And through that, you're going to get the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will produce fruit in us. And then as a result of that, we will then produce fruit in the world. That's what a church will do. That's what an individual will do. That's what a family will do. Why? Because we're not afraid. We're not anxious. We're going to be kind and gentle, long-suffering, meek. That's fruits of the Spirit are going to be produced in us. We'll have that love. 
Man, there'll be, there'll be no backbiting. There'll be no stabbing. There'll be none of this, not in the church. Because we're producing fruit. If. If. We trust in the Lord and have hope in Him completely. Now, I asked you at the beginning, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand now, but I asked you and asked you at home at the beginning, how many of you feel blessed? And men, all of us raised our hand. Now, I don't want you to answer it, but I want you to think about now, are you blessed? Now, what I mean by it, are you, are you fully, listen, fully satisfied in your life? Are you Fully, listen, are you fully at peace? Not, and I'm kind of, kind of, mostly satisfied, in, you know, I got some things. Or not, well, I have peace, kind of, a eh, little, you know, it's some there. Then you're not blessed. You're not blessed. Because it says blessed are those, fully satisfied are those who have trust completely and have hope completely in the Lord. So we can yield ourselves to Him. And listen, He would not have written it down here if He didn't mean that it was possible for us to be fully trusting in Him. He would not have written it down here if he knew that there was absolutely no way anyone in here, anyone watching, could fully be at peace, could fully be satisfied. Paul says, be content, which means satisfied in all things, through all things, during all things. Because I know I know my dad has this. Abba Father has this. If I trust in him with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding in all my ways, all my ways, acknowledge him, I will be fully satisfied. I will be fully at peace because he will be the ones directing my, he will be the one directing my path. Make sense? It's possible. So here today, if you're here or you're at home, and maybe you don't have peace, maybe you don't feel fully satisfied in your life, then my friends, I'm here to tell you, there's only one reason, and that's because you feel blessed by the world and not by Christ. Because if you're blessed and you know and you trust in Him with everything, Blessed is he, blessed is she, blessed are they, the church, that fully trusts in the Lord and has hope in him. I mean, you'll be like a tree planted by the water with roots digging down deep. And in the times of heat, you won't have to fear. In the season of drought, you won't have to be anxious. But yet you will still produce fruit. Man, imagine, folks. Imagine people today, what they would think about if they saw people having full hope. Because we were being nourished by the Spirit of God. I'll close with this. If you were walking today and there was someone who was so thirsty, man, they had just come from the desert and you had a glass of water in your hand, can I tell you something? They would want what you have. Amen? Amen. They would do anything to get that water that you have. Can I tell you? We're in a desert today in our nation. We're in a drought. A spiritual drought. We have the possibility of planting ourselves by the water. Being nourished, at it, people will look at us and say, I need that. Can you have that?
Do you trust Him? Do you have hope in Him? Do you have the childlike faith? I'm going to ask the praise team to come on back up as we get ready to close out here now. And I want to ask you that question, you folks at home. Would you retract your answer first when I asked you at the beginning, do you feel blessed? Because right now we feel blessed because God is good to us. But I'm asking, do you feel fully satisfied today? Is there or is there something, something's just missing? Then perhaps, perhaps, it's that we're feeling blessed by the world, but we're not getting accomplished that blessed by God. Because maybe we're holding on to something. Maybe we're not letting go of what God says let go of. Maybe we're not following where God wants us to follow. Maybe we're not surrendering where God wants us to surrender. But today, if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, or you're listening today and you don't know Christ, my friend, today I want to implore you, I beg you to turn your heart to Him. Seek Him with all your heart. Ask Him to forgive you of your sin. Receive Jesus into your life today, and you will know what satisfied is. Christian, if you're here, you're listening or watching, Today, we can have a peace that passes understanding. It's there for us. If we will just yield ourselves completely. Maybe there's something in your life that you've held on to for a long time and you just need to let go. That's what he's talking about. We'll have time of praise and worship and I want you to, to praise him today as we close out. But man, right there where you are, if there's something going on and you just say, God, I need you. I need you through salvation or I need you through the recommitment of my heart. I need to follow you. I know I've been holding off. Here it is. Lord, I'll give it to you. Then would you do that? I'll be down front here. I'll be real, willing to pray with you. You at home, if you'll call the number that's for the church, 536-4227, someone will be listening today, ready to, to visit with you. Man, don't, don't stay in this desert. Don't stay being the shrub in life. Be the tree that's planted by the river, the river of Jesus. Let me pray with you. Father, as we step into this time, Lord, might you be honored and glorified in all that we're doing. God, we love you and we thank you. Speak to our hearts now during this invitation time. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.